Hello and welcome. I am so glad you're here. I'm Beth, a creator-based coach with CMH Coaching for Life. I'm here today to help you and those you love create a life you feel grounded and at home in. Think of a life where you feel peace, love for those around you, and in a flow with just enough challenge to keep you happy and creating something wonderful. Sounds like magic, but it's not. You can create that life every single day. You can have a life full of love, excitement, hope, and creation. Our mission at CMH Coaching is to flood the earth with light through compassion, mindfulness, and hope. And I'm going to ask a favor of you. If you like what you see and hear today, think of someone you know that would enjoy and benefit from this message. Our mission is to flood the world with compassion, mindfulness, and hope. Share this with them. But for now, this is time just for you. So settle into whatever you're doing and enjoy this time with the girls where we create that one awesome, amazing, perfect life every one of us is seeking. I looked out the window and what did I see? <laughs> Welcome to A Creator Based Life. This is the weekly podcast for CMH Coaching. We empower women of faith to create lives they love, the lives they've always wanted. And I'm here with both of my good, good friends, Jacine Bonnet, a business coach, mom, grandma, and an avid runner. And Jennifer DeRoos, also cold today, a coach, a can grow anything gardener, and a hypnotherapist. And I'm Beth in Northeast Texas, where it was nine degrees today. Oh, and I had to give my chickens hot water just to get them started. I'm a master life coach, an author, and the creator of the creator based way create your one awesome, amazing, perfect life. And we're happy. It's a good day. The sun finally came out, even if we didn't get any snow. So mm -hmm. we're good. Mm -hmm. But what we want to talk about today is our Not school better. experiences when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. I love this. It's kind of like opening Pandora's box. Uh -huh. You know, you get started and I'm like, well, what was your school experience like when you were growing up? You guys, I'll give you a minute to think about it. And I'll tell you a little bit about what my school experience was like growing up. I started kindergarten when I was four um, because I had a late birthday. So I got to go in. I was a really shy kid. I was really happy to stay home and play by myself, but I had two working parents and they were thrilled that I was finally going to school. I don't want to go. And I remember <laughs> going to kindergarten in Mrs. Steinhauer's class. She was a tall, skinny woman who had a beehive hairdo with gray streaks in it that I remember and horn rimmed glasses. And she was huge. She was like a giant to me and she was terrifying. And so I didn't like kindergarten. I didn't like being there. It was noisy. There were lots of children. And I spent a lot of time in the coat closet waiting for life to be over so I could go home. I was really happy that there were blocks. I loved the wood blocks and I loved the paints. And for that, I would come out of the coat closet. But making macaroni plates just seemed like such a dumb thing. And I don't recall having friends in kindergarten. I don't recall really having school friends until I was in about the third grade. And third, fourth, fifth, I had more school friends. But um, it was just awkward. I was just an awkward kid. The reason I wanted to be there was I wanted to learn to read and write. And I guess that wasn't the norm. So I didn't. <laughs> didn't make a lot of friends. What about you guys? What was your school experience like? Do you want the beginning of our school experience or like it doesn't matter? I started at the beginning, but we can just keep <laughs> weaving as we go on. Um, my beginning was the hardest. My middle was better and my ending was great because I finally figured out how to be myself in high school. Yeah. So that's why I started with the beginning. My beginnings were really awkward. <laughs> well, mine I started off, I didn't go to kindergarten because we just moved a lot. My dad was Air Force. And then when he got out of the Air Force, he was just a gypsy at heart, I think. 
Um, so oh, we wanderer. were often moving, often moving. So first grade, I started off in Mrs. Roney's class. We called her Mrs. Macaroni. Yeah, she was a <laughs> Um, and I fell in love on the playground, like. Oh, yeah. you had an early crush. I had an early crush. He was my, I have a brother that's two years older than me. And um, his friend, Danny Wettstein was just so darling. So, so darling. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I, I think he, um, I don't remember what um, Native American uh, nationality he had, but he was part Native American and then, so he had like the darker skin, Big, dark but brown had, eyes. No, he had blonde hair and blue eyes and, and it was darker skin. Oh, stunning. Yeah. <laughs> and I was yes, just stunning. Like, so I would chase him on the playground. I, oh. I chased him, you know, the boys are supposed to chase you now. No, no. no. Yeah. I no. get that. And, um, we were, I was in that school for, I don't maybe almost towards the end of first grade and then moved to another school in the same town because we moved that moved school districts. And so, um, and then I was there for like two years and my second grade memory was of my, we had to get our chores done before we went to school. Uh -huh. And if we didn't, I, you just did, right? You just did. I just did. Right. Because I'm there was no option to stay home. You just no. had to get your chores done. Yeah. Get your chores done. Get up, practice the piano, do your chores before you go to school. And I remember it must not have been the first time. It I have no idea how many times that I had been told to clean my room. And I cleaned it, but I shoved everything under my bed. <laughs> I've done that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so my mom came and got me in the middle of class oh my gosh yeah and the principal's wife was my teacher and it was just mortifying like to have your mother come and announce loudly you should yes. do it loudly, right yeah so anyway that was second grade and then we just moved several times I went to five different elementary schools in six years so oh, wow you uh, did move a lot I did move a lot, but I had some really cool teachers. Um, I, when I was in Colorado, I had a, a um, kid that, gosh, he was always saying crude things on the playground. I think I must have been in fourth grade, fifth, mm -hmm. fourth, third, fourth, third, early fourth grade. Okay. And, you know, he just was not very nice and bullying other kids. And um, so... I beat him up and Good for you stood up for those little guys. <laughs> I, did. I did. And I got sent to the principal's office and Oh, oh JC. So, I never got sent to the principal's office. What was that like? It was a little scary because he called my mom, you know, and, yeah. um, and she'd I already done it once come in and got you out of class. Yeah. 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 This is a different school, a whole different school. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I don't, I think she told me, I don't recall if it's my own memory, but the way that she tells the story is that when the principal called her and told her what I had done and why I had done it, he's like, I really hate to do this because she was really right. <laughs> but nice. we, do yeah. have the, we do have the rules, you know, so. Yeah, you know, yeah, so I have to yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, but that was interesting because the next school that I went to was the end of fourth grade, fifth grade and sixth grade. And that was where I was bullied. Oh, and It was interesting because I did not stick up for myself. I wonder what shifted in your mind between then and when you stood up to the bully. Yeah, I wonder, yeah. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I've never pondered that before. It right. just has hit me right now as we're having this conversation. Of, what did huh. nine, 10 year old you learn that made her back down and just take it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe that, that time in the principal's office was so significant. I don't know. I'm going to have to explore that. Yeah. Find, you know, That's an interesting yeah. thought. Yeah. yeah. So.
Yeah. What about you, Jen? How was school? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think about it. I was like, okay, I'm trying to remember. Did there were some good times that I really liked, and then, but I think if overall, it was just not a pleasant experience for me. No. Nah. Um, I remember in grade school, I, I don't really have a lot of memories like in kindergarten and things like that, first grade or anything like that. Right. And I would try and remember like my sec. I can remember where my second grade class was, but that was about all I could remember about it. Um, I, re I remember my third grade teacher because she ate glue. I mean, your third grade teacher ate glue? Paste yeah. or Elmer's glue? Elmer's glue, the white Elmer's glue. We'd get it in the big gallon, like the big jug, and we'd get uh -huh. these little cups that we would do our art project with. And she would squeeze the cups out and and do, and then and then lick her finger. And I'd be like, oh, you know. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I remember, that. I remember my my third grade teacher ate glue. That's all I can remember about third grade. Um, yeah. The highlight. The highlight. <laughs> the highlight. I I loved kickball and dodgeball. Mm -hmm. Um, but other than that, I mean, I didn't really have a good um junior high school experience and have didn't really I did not like high school at all did not mm -hmm. have a good experience so it just was really but then I also was experiencing some things and I was a very angry teenager so it yeah, wasn't you had a rough home life right? yeah and so it wasn't yeah. like I really had a lot of outlet or th people to talk to or things like that so it was like just really yeah it was a very angsty teenager so yeah, yeah me too really angsty really so when angsty. you say I remember yours, in high school was good mine wasn't mine was just like I was done and out of there yeah yeah I tried to skip school once when I was in the first grade and hid behind the snow drift until after the bus left didn't think it through very well because after the bus left I was stuck out in the snow drift what was I going to do next I went home oh. and my mom spanked me good and made me stay in bed all day long <laughs> yeah was the, you know I was never a really long-term thinker yeah. but the reason I ask what what school was like for you is you know did you ever go into the cafeteria and not know who you were going to sit with mm -hmm. or or just you know when you come into a room and there's all these different people and you're just or worse yet when you go to sit they tell you the seat's taken and you have to keep yeah. looking oh yeah did you have that mm -hmm. yeah that just was just, I remember that from high school. Yeah, that was just, just hard, hard, I, hard. I think the best parts of school were when I had friends, when I, so I have like my, one of my best friends was from ninth grade. Eight, yeah, I met her at the end of eighth grade and um, into ninth grade and we're still friends today. And yep. Isn't and that was unusual that, yeah, it's beautiful, but it was yeah. unusual for me with moving so often because back then you had to write letters to keep it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. Right. You couldn't even call long distance. No, because it was too expensive. Yeah, yeah. So there just wasn't a lot of opportunity. So that was really cool to have friends. And in high school, yeah. you know, my friends were, um, I, I didn't, after my situation with the, the girls, from elementary school, late elementary school. I just, I didn't put up with, after that, I didn't put up with people who stabbed other people in the back and who talked mean about people. So often in high school, I found myself, I didn't sit in the cafeteria because I didn't like the drama that happened in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. I just went to the, I chose to go to the library. I, uh, I, chose I sat in the band hall because I was a band geek. There were about 15 of us that all sat in the band hall. Anybody was welcome. It was good. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. So, I would get, <laughs> I would get a candy bar and a soda. This is how that's, that was my lunch in high school. That's how uh -huh. I, would, I know get a candy bar and a Dr. Pepper and I'd go sit in the yearbook room. That's what I would do. There you go. Yeah. Everybody found a place. Everybody had well, found a place. What yeah. I wanted to talk about was with those, when, you know, that awkwardness of coming into the room, um, there's just that feeling of being alone and feeling different. And that for me, I don't know about you guys, but that for me was the root of it all. I felt mm 
different. I felt different in kindergarten. I felt different in third grade. Somewhere around the middle of middle school, I started to embrace different, mm -hmm. that different wasn't a bad thing. And in high school, I kind of figured out how to really get my hippie girl on and just enjoy being different. You know, it was cool. But have you guys had that experience where different felt lonely? Different wasn't good. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really tough. Um, when you're in that space, you kind of have to put yourself back. Cause I know you guys have done a lot of personal work and a lot of coaching work, but when you put yourself back in the space of when you did, and you were uncomfortable with different, what was happening in your head that made you feel so uncomfortable? Because, I mean, you could have just as e easily sauntered into the world thinking like you owned everything, but there was <laughs> something that was in there that was causing that feeling that difference, not so good, or I'm mm -hmm. too different or. But, but it was for wrong. me was there was a wrongness, like I was wrong being different. And so I had to change to be accepted and be right. And so there was like yeah. very much this wrongness about me. Yeah. Like, Did you ever see that movie? Because... I'm sorry, Jen, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, cause it was really hard because you're like, this, you, you're, this is my core self. And now the world's yeah. telling me I'm wrong, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever see the movie, my big fat Greek wedding? Yeah. I loved oh. it. Do you remember what she wanted more than anything in the first one in school? She wanted to take white bread sandwiches to school. Because do you remember knows. when she goes to um because she would take souvlaki or she would take baklava or she would take whatever was at her Greek, her parents' oh, Greek yeah. restaurant for dinner. I for, we for die dinner. for that. Yeah. I know. Well, yeah, now, much. but she wanted to sit at the girls' table that were all popular and eat a white bread sandwich that was in a like folded just so and in a paper bag, not in a lunchbox and be cool, be the cool with one of the cool kids. Yeah. And when she decides to go to college, she goes to college and on her first day of college, she buys herself Wonder Bread and she eats in the cafeteria because that was her difference. She felt mm -hmm. like she was too different and she couldn't fit in. So I just, I just loved that. But mm -hmm. the real, the reality of that is we're different on purpose. Mm -hmm. So how do we go from different is wrong to we're different by design and our different is our, our differences are really our strengths. Mm -hmm. um, for me, the whole discomfort with difference, like you said, Jen, was different. It was wrong. Mm -hmm. but for me, the different was wrong was a story there were stories in my head. And I was listening to a coaching call a couple of mornings back and I just loved it. I, I wrote it down because I really wanted to get it right for you guys. So the gal who came for help, she took a long time explaining herself. It was a very long, very detailed story. All of the background and all of the current circumstance, lots and lots of words. And the coach listened and extended empathy and she was really sweet. And at the end, when the girl was done explaining everything, the coach said, I'm going to ask you to do something very difficult. And she's very sincere and she's really sweet about it. Um, would you be willing? Would you be willing to try? And the gal that had called in said, yes, yes. She took a deep breath. She was a little bit hesitant and she was, you know, a little shaky about it, but yes. And the coach said, stop the stories. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh stop the stories that's a big one but that connected to me because I'm so imaginative and I've got all of that story stuff going in my head and then Jen you brought up the idea of different as being wrong what were the stories that you guys had going oh, mm -hmm. so many because you didn't have you didn't have the the same clothes as everybody else had. So you were wrong. You were poor. You weren't good enough. Not good My enough. boots were too clunky. I didn't have the cool boots. It's not even enough. if it was 20 degrees and slush in winter, I didn't want to wear the boots, you know? Yeah, there was, you know, you weren't, you didn't have the right friends. You didn't have the right look. You didn't have the right, like, 
group and just it's just, it's just so much just a lot of different stories oh and then of course you know i was in the band so right there everybody tagged you as a band nerd band geek like, i'm a band not, geek. Yeah. not good enough because you weren't a cheerleader and you weren't in sports and all this stuff and everything so it was just it was a lot of other people's stories that i took on as my truth yeah and, but at that age you don't really know and so you're just trying to figure it out yeah. Well, you look back at it and you're like, where would I have been without those stories? Mm. I know. Or a different story. I'm like, could somebody have come in and t told me, say, hey, why don't you, why not, what about this story? Like, I would love to have somebody to have taught me, like, you know, your uniqueness is, is, is a really gift. fun and good. Yeah. And just revel in your strangeness or things yeah. like that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I was Don't too busy so trying funny. to fit in to be accepted. And I know Brene Brown talks a lot about that. Like we lose a lot of ourselves and we lose and we compromise a lot of our ourselves when we just try and fit in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, we do. We do. What are you thinking, Jacine? I can see it just going. Yeah, I'm, just, just, yeah. kinda, I'm learning a lot. I'm having a lot of revelatory like thoughts right now, which is really important and interesting. Um, just thinking back, you know, because I did move so much, I, I was very outgoing. And so I just came in and why wouldn't you be my, I am. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're moving in? oh, by the way, this is my older brother. You know, I kind of took care of my brothers and because they were more introverted. Mm -hmm. And so thinking back, I thought, well, why, when I lived in Colorado, before we moved back to that Fruitland, Idaho, where where um, I finished my elementary school, um, what was the difference? And I I thought about it, and I had my older brother Mark, who's two years older than me, and in school as well. And I thought about two instances when we were in Colorado where oh. people were going to bully me or did bully me, and um, one was a girl that we had found a turtle together, and. I had the turtle first and then she was going to get the turtle. Long story short, my dad said, this turtle's going to die. We got to set him free. So we set him free. I tell her at the bus stop and she starts <laughs> beating me up. Oh my gosh. It was terrible. Yeah. But I had my older brother who stood in between and said, huh? no, you don't. You're and not I, hitting my sister. No. No, leave her alone, took me home, made sure I was okay. And then with a neighbor boy, same thing. I don't remember what Brad was pushing me around for, but he was. But Mark came to, you know, he was there for me. When we moved, he was in junior high school and I was at elementary school by myself. And so with that, I didn't have his protection which is interesting, mm -hmm. right? It was, there it is. It was an opportunity for me yep. to learn and to grow. And in that and through that, I've been able to process and experience forgiveness. And, you know, just that so many, so many things I wouldn't have learned had I not gone through that experience. But, you know, the question you're asking, Jen, and Jen, I agree with that is, you know, what were the stories in my mind? And the stories in my mind before that had always been, well, of course, I'm good enough. Of course, you know, I am, of course. And for two years solid, there was, you're not good enough. And I knew that we were poor because we had moved from not affluence, but, you know, middle America to living in a shack. Mm -hmm. And having one pair of shoes and getting hand-me-downs and all of those things and, and having enough to eat, but not a plethora, right? It was, right. You right. Were it wasn't fancy. Scrapping. You were scrapping for food. Yeah. We, yeah. we ate, we ate, <laughs> let's yeah. just say that we ate. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, those stories that people tell you, that you're not enough, that you're not good enough. That and you hold on to. Yeah, yeah. And shaking yeah. those. I mean, that affected me. I let that, I chose to let that affect me till I was 40. As a child, you didn't know. You know, it no. was just what was. 
Yeah. But somewhere in your 20s, by the time you're 30, you're figuring out that you have control over what's in here in your mind and mm-hmm. that you get to choose what your thoughts are going to be. Mm-hmm. You're not a victim. You're actually the creator of your thoughts. So mm-hmm. what thoughts do you use now? Because we all still get uncomfortable with our differences or feel vulnerable or less than or smaller. What do you, what do you do now that you're a grown up who's been training in coaching for a while? What do you do with your, your thoughts when they come in and they're, well, here I'll start. They're not helpful. They're not kind and they're not true. So I just do this. (laughs) Move along. Not helpful. Not kind. Not true. Move along. Yeah. But what do you guys do with your thoughts when they come in like that? I mean, we do occasionally uh, kind of ruminate on them, right? We can dig ourselves in a hole. We're well, not perfect. I, I think it's important. And Beth, so guys, I do personal coaching with Beth and with Jen. So mm-hmm. um, having that personal coach who's willing to challenge your beliefs, because <laughs> I was getting strong on Thursday with one of I- my you were strong you felt really strong about something yeah I I think I shouted at you but um, I think I I think the question I asked was whose voice whose voice is that where did that voice come from because it wasn't a Jacine voice (laughs) yeah yeah I what was it uh no that's a freaking lie why would I right that's a freaking line I'm like woohoo okay (laughs) yeah um But yeah, so for me, it's really, really healthy to have a coach or a best friend who can talk you through that and and has an outsider voice um, that might not always make you happy when they say it to you. I agree. I really, I do think everybody needs a coach in one form or another. We all just need that connection and to have that other person to mirror back to us what we're really saying, right? The outside voice. So we're out of our head. Yeah. 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 And so that's your, is that one of the main ways that you work with those not helpful thoughts or? Yeah. I think for the ones that are really tough, right? Mm -hmm. The Mm -hmm. ones that are really tough that you might even, I might not even realize that, that, that it's a, it's, it's a challenge until, yeah, that it's a belief until somebody goes, Hmm. you're like, huh, that doesn't really sound a hundred percent accurate. Let's explore that just a little bit. No, yeah. I don't want to explore it. What are you talking about? Well, no, I have a friend that calls me out the same way. And I know Jen does too. We all have somebody that will listen to us and that will call us out on our uh, inaccuracies. We'll just call them inaccuracies, right? Yeah. Or, or stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What else do you do when you're just in the everyday? You don't have a coach. You're just in the everydayness. Journaling, uh, praying is huge for me. Get diving into the word of God is huge to me. Just yeah. uh, I have to be there because he's the one that helps me see who I really am. Well, and he's the one that helps you see clearly, right? Yeah. yeah. I love having um, an ongoing discussion. You know, I start the day in scripture and prayer and then just have an ongoing discussion during the day. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, that really helps too. I love that, JC. What about you, Jen? What do you do with your stinking thinking? I I get real curious about it because because a lot of times I'm like, I mean, because I know how I want to think and I know how I want to feel. And so if something comes up, I just am like, yeah, okay, now what is this about? And I just get real curious. And I do ask certain questions. And some of them are like, um, like, what's the emotional payoff that I'm holding on to this? Ooh, I love no, that. Yeah, like, like, it's obviously creating an emotion in me. What's the payoff? And so, so I can just try and get like really deep and say like, I gotta what, write that down. What need needs to be met that I like, or like, what is the emotional payoff for holding on to this? You know, because yeah. maybe it is I just want to feel like a victim, or I just want to be mad, or I just want to, you know. So sometimes I have to like, I'll ask those questions, and I do have one. <laughs> that I'll, seriously, I'll ask myself, is this true? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times I'll have the argument with myself. 
well, it feels true. And if I have that, well, it feels true that I know it's not true. It's really not true, but I want it to be true. So it feels true. So what is the truth? You know, mm-hmm. and so like I'll, I'll try and like just find out, you know, what's behind that. Um, I always I, I always ask, is there more? Is there more? Is there more to the story? Is there more? And it, it'll I lead you that. down to where you're like, oh, so this really isn't about X, Y, or Z. This is about this way over here yeah way over, the there. Way over and, here and so I just just get curious and ask questions yeah I love that I love that yeah curiosity I completely forgot about curiosity I like to ask what am I learning mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. what were you going to say JC I was one of the things like is do I remember a time when I was able to handle like this thought or maybe it's a similar situation that you're in. And what was a time when I was able to not take, take that to heart and believe it. Right. And why was I able to do it then? And I'm not able to do it now. Yeah. How can I use what I used then to yeah. overcome this? Yeah. What um, was it that I brought with you? Know, yeah. Brought to the table at that time. And how can I, that yeah. is, I like that idea a lot. Yeah. I like that. Well, and because you draw strength on the past that way and the lessons that you've already learned. Mm-hmm. It's a lot like um, I'll ask myself, what do I need right now? <laughs> and once I get past a Hershey bar or um, something <laughs> sweet, I'll, OK, OK, girlfriend. But what do you really need right now? I know that's not going to in the long run, it's not going to help. But yeah, and that helps me too to just and it's kind of like the being curious mm-hmm. Like you're suggesting, Jen. No, because like yeah, you're asking a question. What do I need right now? So yeah, yeah what do I need? And it's kind of like, what's my emotional payoff yeah. in this? What am I giving myself that in in this kind of convoluted way yeah. that I really need? Mm-hmm. So how do you move past that initial? You know, what do I need? Because oftentimes I'm looking for that easy fix, right? Like the Hershey uh, bar. The Hershey bar or, you know, whatever it is for you, piece of pie. Uh, some people do pizza, whatever it is, right? It's usually oh, food-based food. though, because yeah, food-based is such an instant gratification. That's when I'll ask myself, like, because if it, it comes up, oh, you'll just need, you just need a cookie. And then I'll say, okay, so is that true? Do I really just need a cookie? It feels okay. like I need a cookie. I want a cookie, but like, what, what? what and so, you just keep asking questions until it reveals itself of like, no, you really just need to see, you just need to be seen or heard. You don't feel like you're being heard or something like I that. Feel it'll, better. Yeah. It'll come up what your yeah. need is. I'm looking for the sweetness that I feel when I'm in that cookie. I'm looking for the love that I felt when my mom gave me food after school. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. for something related something. to that. But it's not really the cookie. It's the yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So you just yeah. keep asking questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I can see that's where writing would really pay off because it slows Absolutely. your brain down enough. Yeah. Yeah. Go for a walk. It's hard to think about walks right now because it's so cold, <laughs> cold. I see and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, but, but a walk really were, makes a difference. Yeah. Or even just the stretching. stretching. Right. Yeah. 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 Go outside. Change your Tony Robbins just says change your physiology, whether that's you know, stand up, jump up and down raise your arms. Yes. Yep. Or that. Yeah. In your time, Lord, you Lord, know, that's right. I- I- IYTL. Yep. <laughs> IYTL will do it every time for me. It is so good. Change your physiology. That's good. Mm-hmm. I like it. And that's how we take care of ourselves. And that's what kind of it all boils down to that. And remembering our differences are really our gifts. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just remind yourself if you're feeling left out, and you're feeling different, remind yourself that being different is good, that it's really good. And that will help you feel a little less left out and take care of yourself. Yeah. You know, it was really cool because we did this on, on the 50, 50 girl page is, and we talked about it last week. I think Jen brought it up the 24, you know, in oh, what's your song for 24? 24 and yours came up, Beth. We are the world. Right? It did. It did. I and- love that. So I actually had a moment this morning where I went in and I did the YouTube video of it and it showed all of the artists that 
were that were involved, involved with that. In that. And it's powerful. It's like a seven minute video. But what I noticed on that video is the differences. But They're how, so different. Everybody in that video, I remember how powerful that was. You All had different shapes, from, colors, backgrounds, goals. Genres, different. Yeah, genres, their yeah. genres were different. Their voices were different. Everything was different. But yeah. when they came together, I remember when that song came out and when they did that for Africa and it is powerful. So if you guys are feeling down and you want to pick me up and you want to just see how differences create beauty and extraordinary things, go watch it. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's what we build on. That's the creator-based way is we build on differences and it's so powerful. The unification, when we all get together and everybody's differences show up, it's explosive. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Explosive in a really good way. <laughs> Not a bad way, Dance. a really good way. Dance it. That's right. That's right. Well, we got some great things coming up. Tonight we're doing Mastermind at is seven o'clock central and uh, everybody's bringing their questions and their accountability partners. And we're going to talk about some really good stuff for mastermind. I'm excited. And then tomorrow we have coaching clear and we're back full steam with learning our coaching principles and clearing out that old emotional baggage and then writing and learning about how we receive guidance in writing. And then Wednesday we have book club. Tell me how book clubs go in because I don't get to go to that one, but I've read some snippets from the moments book and I'm so impressed. Love so, it. Yeah. It's a powerful book. Mm -hmm. Jen, what is your, your number one fave well, part right now so far? I, I, I really, I, I put it together where it was like, um, oh, so that's why I remember certain things because it created something within me, it created an emotion, it created an experience and, and both good and bad, but he likes to focus on the good yeah. because we can then curate and create those type of experiences for ourselves and others. And so that's kind of where I really grabbed onto it. Cause I'm like, oh, I want to create more things for myself. And a lot of it is just awareness. Yeah. Um, of like, this could be a defining moment for me if I do X, Y, and Z or something like that. So I don't know. I'm just really enjoying the book. Yeah. I loved um, when he talked about taking the pe taking the pits and creating peaks out of your pits. Yes. For me, it was like, well, you, you, we have habit stacks and we have kind of systems that we put in our lives. And that was my first thought was, well, what kind of system he talks about it in the business world, right? How they mm -hmm. do the systems, but what kind of system would I want to have in place so that my pits can turn into peaks? Which I right. love that. Yeah. I think we kind of are taught that in the gospel to look at what you're learning in your struggles or in your trials, because you can turn that pit into a teaching moment and a peak once yeah. you're out of it though. I mean, like I know sometimes I, I, when I'm in the thick of it, I don't understand it, but then I can like, Hopefully well, let's have think that. Of it, we just have to process all the emotion, right? We just have to be yeah. in it, give ourselves permission to be there. So yeah. I really saw kind of like that principle working out with this moment. It's also, yeah. So what about yeah. you, JC? Oh man, I, I realized that I really want to help make moments for other people mm -hmm. and to recognize that those can be special moments for them. And so just having that focus is really cool because I'll have people's names come to my mind and I can reach out and do whatever I need to do, you know, whatever I feel impressed to do. And it's acting on those moments where you get those, those inklings or those thoughts and acting on those and creating moments for others mm -hmm. that they create moments for me too, as I create moments for others, which is- yeah. It's beautiful. And the yeah. name of the book is Moments, right? Um, the yep, the power, power of moments. Thank you, Jen. Love the book. Last yeah. name of the authors are is Heath, right? Heath. Brothers and Dan. Mm -hmm. All right. If you want to get back in it and you want to join us, that's um that happens every Wednesday at 1 30 Central. And you can get the link on the 5050 Girl page. Mm -hmm. Then 
We have a really cool um, experience coming up with the anxiety masterclass. JC, you want to talk about that? And then Jen's jumpstart is they're just like back to back events. So I'm excited about that. They are. Yeah. So guys, anxiety masterclass, it is going to be, if you sign up on Eventbrite, you'll get that first module for free and you'll be able to come and join us and learn how to just like get through anxiety, some real hands-on tools and some coaching. So it's going to be really cool. Um, you'll get that first module for free and then have the opportunity to sign up for an additional, is it seven, seven more, more weeks? It's going to be an eight week class. Yeah. So yeah. it's really comprehensive and there's, we plan to have a mastermind going forward afterwards for people who want to stay in practice as a group. So I think awesome. it's going to be really powerful, a great way to bring tranquility into your life a great way to rewrite your story, a great way to move forward feeling powerful. Yeah, just waking up each day and being happy that you woke up. Yeah, yeah. peaceful. When you wake up, how great would that be? But in the meantime, when we're stressed and we don't quite have that training yet, Jen's got this amazing jump start for working with a uh, release and doodling. Can you tell us a little bit about that that's coming up? Well, it's just a way to um, access your subconscious mind where we know that is what helps us to stay in the state of stress or anxiety or attention state. And so it's just a way of tapping into that and taking just five minutes or just a little bit of time and just saying, okay, this is my big boulder, but I'm going to just chip away at this little space, this little part of it right now. And by doing this over and over again, you eventually can release the energy out of that. And so this just helps to reestablish like a homostasis in your, um, in your, in your autonomic nervous system. So it just helps. Yeah. I'm excited to try it again because last time we did it, I was stressed <laughs> to do it. I'm like, what? I have to, what? <laughs> but it, it was, was such a good cool. workshop last year. I am very excited to do it again. So good. Yeah. It's just another tool, just another yep. tool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It is a great tool. So did I forget anything? I think that's everything for the week. We got a lot going on y'all. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. And we will be back next Monday. Check out Eventbrite for the anxiety masterclass. Just all you do is search anxiety masterclass online and it'll come up for creator-based coaching and Take a minute and also while you're in there, sign up for that jumpstart class because that's through Eventbrite as well. And, and there yeah. are limited spaces, you guys. So oh, yeah, they are. They're small classes because we want to do one on one with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've already got several people signed up for the jumpstart um, for sure. So be yeah. sure to get your, get in there and get her done before yeah. it fills up because once it's full, it's full. Yeah. yeah. That's the way it is. So I hope the sunshine returns at your houses. It's back out at my house, crystal clear skies. They're blue and the sun's out. It's deceptive. You go outside and you think, oh, it's 65, but it's still 17. But that's okay, because it will warm up. It's going to be good. Stay warm. We'll talk soon. Sounds good. Bye, y'all. Have a beautiful, beautiful 50, 50 week. <laughs> Choose to be happy, choose to be free Moment by moment, it's all up to me Cause what I think about, I bring about That's the way it is and there is no doubt Day by day I pave the way with every little thought I think Thanks for joining us today in a creator-based life. I hope you felt that compassion, mindfulness, and hope you came seeking today. You can find more of it at cmhcoaching.com or on linktree slash cmhcoaching. Of course, any social media outlet, we're there too. Because you felt the benefit and light in this message, please invite those you care deeply about to join us. Help us to create a ripple effect across the globe of compassion, mindfulness, and hope. Then we can create a creator-based life together. Moment by 
Have a great week, y'all. We'll talk to you soon. Day I pave the way.